In an attempt to nullify public concern over logging the Sitka, Macmillan Bloedel refers to their operations in the Upper Sitka as model forestry, monitored by a committee known as the Sitka Follow-up Committee. Ironically, this model forestry has resulted in extreme environmental degradation of the Upper Sitka in numerous ways. Clear cuts of over 500 hectares in size, equivalent to 850 football fields. Logging to the river's edge in fishery sensitive zones. Completely eliminating creek and riverside riparian zones. Numerous slides washing into the river, which are aided and caused by road building and logging in unstable areas. Logging buffer zones around core swamp habitat, which has been identified as crucial Roosevelt elk cover. The small islands of elk ranges that are allowed for have not been preserved, but are only temporarily deferred from logging and will eventually be cut as well. These wildlife winter ranges were to be excluded from annual allowable cut calculations. But in 1990, Wilderness Committee research found that Macmillan Blodell had included these areas in their calculation. This totally contravenes and disregards the Sitka planning process. The Sitka is presently being over-harvested at a rate of 75 to 95 percent above the long-range sustained yield. This massive overcutting will invariably lead to lost forestry jobs. Macmillan Blodell defends the over-harvesting by saying that one cannot look at one watershed in isolation of another. This kind of management approach puts the short-term dollar as priority over sustainable jobs and environmental integrity in the Sitka. In the, in the upper Sitka, where, where this devastation has taken place, as it's so-called, the, the plan is still on target. There is still the, the required amount of deer winter ranges in effect. There's still the, the green up areas in effect. And we have not damaged the, the environment by the, by the, even by that large a, a clear cut. Uh, the, uh, the plan has taken care of all that sort of, that sort of thing. And uh, as far as runoff is concerned, that's flat ground up there. We have not uh, created siltation by it. And uh, no, I disagree. Uh, clear cutting it has not has not uh, ruined the environment. Everybody keeps telling us that the clear cut is what's damaging the economy or the ecology. And uh, I would ask these people, you know, how is clear cutting damaging the economy or the ecology? 
and I don't believe it is. I don't believe there's any proof anywhere to say that clear cutting is damaging the uh, environment out there. Well, Derek Young, that's possibly a good time to bring you into the discussion. Um, as the representative of the WCWC, what is wrong with clear cutting? Well, I think uh, it's, it's starting to be recognized that clear cutting in the way it's done in British Columbia, uh, from the studies that we've uh, seen done down in the States and, uh, and in Europe, uh, indicate that, that one thing that we're not taking into consideration is, is the total biodiversity that's required to make a forest. And when we go to second growth um, plantations, as they are in Europe and, and as practiced here, um, what we miss is, is the, the total range of habitat for not just big game animals, but the total diversity uh, of all species in the forest that are destroyed in a clear cut. And all you have to do is go to um, a clear cut anywhere in British Columbia, and uh, tr uh, typically what happens is a clear cut be anything from 20 to, uh, as in the Sitaka, 700 uh, hectares, and it's simply a wasteland and the methods that we use to clear cut is we take the trees down and then we slash burn after a year or two for a quick nitrogen fix. And the difficulty with that and the, the problem with that is that in a traditional, and some people liken that to a, a traditional forest fire situation. Well, it isn't because in a forest fire situation, when, you, when there's a burn, most of the heat is in the crowns and a lot of the trees will actually survive and certainly the, the, most of the humus layer and the seed stock and all the micro rhizomes that are required to make up a total diverse forest um, stay in place. Whereas in, um, in our uh, clear cut methods and slash burn methods, we take the heat and we put it right down to the humus layer. We burn off just a vast quantity of the humus layer. We destroy all the micro rhizomes, all the things that we are now beginning to discover are necessary for a healthy forest to survive, healthy, um, relationship between uh, the ground itself and, and trees. And we destroy animal habitat, insect habitat, we destroy all those species. And the way we've practiced clear cutting in this province is, is, is really devastating for, the bio, for biodiversity. Bob, why is it so vital that loggers have access to the lower Sitka or any part of the Sitka? It's, it's a very small portion of, uh, of land, 40,000 hectares, in, in relation to the rest of the province. It's, it's postage stamp the, size. Because the Sitka Valley is, is uh, it's, a, it's a real misconception that uh, we, we're there with a logging plan. We're there with an integrated resource use plan. And when you talk about integration of resources, you're, you're talking about everything. You're talking about animals and fish and wildlife of all kinds, recreation, as well as industry. And uh, when, 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 uh, when the fish goes into the river and he swims up the river, he's, he's got to take the whole river. He just doesn't go up to a point where it says ecological reserve and stop. That fish is going to use that whole, that whole valley. And if you want to talk about wildlife, we can talk about wolves, we can talk about elk, you can talk about eagles and hawks and all those sort of things. These animals are transient. They don't sit in one spot and they use the entire ecology. Cougars will use hundreds of square miles. So that, so that if you want to take care of all the environment, then you're going to do the right thing by the wildlife. If you set aside a small area at the mouth of a, a valley like that, and then increase your cut with what's left, so you, you're winding up almost destroying 80% of your ecology to save 20%. And that's not the way to go. It's integration is the story, and uh, in order to integrate, you need to diversify. <coughs> and if you can diversify your cut up and down the valley, instead of creaming it all out at the top end, then you're going to make the plan work.